All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golan from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from sunny blue sky San Diego. And today I'm joined by Christine Blackledge who is in Cyprus. How are you doing, Christine? I am great and thank you so much for having me. No, absolutely. I mean, Christine has run several highly successful businesses in procurement law and marketing. And uh, now she is what she calls a mompreneur, which I love that. You're, you're a mother of four. And, uh, and what we're going to talk today about is uh, your subject about how healthcare workers can become successful business owners. And let's face it, uh, Christine, like healthcare workers have been in the news a lot because obviously they're at the front line of, of the, rea the, the reaction to the pandemic and things like that. Um, but I presume like a lot of people who go into healthcare professions don't think of themselves like business people or, or don't think that possibly they could become business owners. So um, what is it you would say to, to people who maybe, you know, secretly harbor that idea that it, well, it might be nice, but I'm a healthcare worker, I probably can't do that? I think it's so important for them to realize their potential that they can actually achieve this. If they can work so hard for someone else, then why not work for themselves? And that is the motivation, is that they've got that passion to begin with, uh, to care for people, to give people the best possible life that they can possibly have. And they need to really take that on board. And a, a lot of people have wanted to start their own business, but don't know where to start, how to go about it, so that's where I would come in, in terms of coaching and mentoring. Yeah, so, and, 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 I, and I do believe you that you're correct, that uh, that is the thing that probably holds a lot of people back in a lot of professions. But I would say in healthcare in particular, as you said, so focused on helping other people that probably think that, you know, if I was to focus on starting my own business, then I wouldn't be focused so much on the caring aspect. I'd get dragged into the business aspect. So how do you help prepare people or maybe give them a better sense of what running your own business looks like? Mm -hmm. So what we do is, um, what I do is I do boot camps. I do, um, we've actually got um, a boot camp, which I've just finished today. And I've got one tomorrow as well. So we hold a two day boot camp. And that is for um, carepreneurs to think about what the steps are needed in terms of what actions they need to do to achieve their goal. And it's not taking massive action. Everybody's different. So it's mm -hmm. looking at what level that each person is able to achieve their dream and making it a possibility, making it realistic for them to achieve it. So what are some of the types of businesses that that healthcare professionals can, can start? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, they could start a medical staffing agency, for example, uh, providing nurses and healthcare workers to um, organizations or to hospitals, for example, or they could start their own small boutique care homes as well. And that's where they are a residential senior living um, accommodation for a small group of service users. So those are typical examples of what people can actually do and achieve. And then how do you, um, and when you, when you talk to people, how do you help them assess whether they're ready to make a move like this and whether they really understand what's involved in it? Well, I get them to come along to my free web classes and um, I train about some of the aspects of what they need to think about and how they can actually achieve their goal. And I let them see that it is achievable. And everybody, like I said, works at different pace and different steps. And it's just making it so that they feel that this is realistic for them. Yeah, I, I like what you said about the pacing of it, because I mean, I think, uh, I think probably some people think, oh, well, if I'm going to start my own business it means that i'm going to stop doing what i'm doing now and i'm going to start my own business tomorrow and it's going to be this big dramatic change when you're saying that it, you can you can move at your own pace and how comfortable you feel yeah so what we try what i try and do is um arrange 
for people to look at setting their business up within a six month period. It's not a get rich quick scheme. It's not fast. It's not like overnight. It's something that takes time in order for it to be realistic and for it to happen and for it to come to fruition. Then the second thing is the love, the care and the attention that uh, to look after vulnerable people is paramount to that business mm -hmm. being successful. Yeah, because let's face it, I mean, starting your own business can be, you know, stressful and, and the beginnings of getting the business off the ground can, can be stressful regardless of, of what kind of business you're in. But as you say, if you're in a business like this with healthcare, you still, you have to be able to deliver the care and attention that's needed. So in some ways you've got that double burden where you have to set aside all that stress and make sure that it's not translating to your customers. Exactly. And that's uh, one of the in key ingredients is the passion. Mm -hmm. Passion to be able to give a quality service to the people that are using the, the service that you're providing. So you have to have that passion. Otherwise, you're not going to give people a, a good outcome. Mm -hmm. They're going to not be happy with the service. So what are some of the, I mean, just to name names, but can you give me some examples of the success stories you've seen? Because I think it'd be great for people to get an insight into what's possible. Yeah, well, uh, some of the success stories, um, I've co coached and mentored clients as well, and they've been able to set up their care business within four week period. Uh, one client managed to get a contract within a two month period. So it's working on the action plans and the goals that are set. And then the client then achieves those goals. And once they follow the system, then their business will be there ready to, to go and for them to know how to manage and cope with that system. And that's so so probably, as you said, probably the first step is, you know, figuring out what part of, of the industry you want to be in. And so how do you help people kind of assess where they would fit best and where they would have the greatest acumen and passion? Yeah. So what I do is I, I do an assessment and I talk to them about what they feel that they would like to achieve. And um, if I feel that um, that they're not ready to do a particular type of care business mm -hmm. then I would look at what is best for the client as well as the service user that they're going to be um, managing that service for and then um, when they get when they decide to take the leap and get started um, do you do you recommend that they have mentors like you to help them along the way on an ongoing basis because I think a lot of people get frightened about when they pull the trigger on doing their own business, suddenly they feel very alone. Mm. Yes, um, I definitely do give them support. And my support, I've got clients uh, that have been in, that I'm still in touch with seven years ago. Mm -hmm. So it's not as if to say that, you know, they set their business up and go, um, because care is always changing, it's fluent all the time. So I'm always there as a mentor for anyone to ring me if they, feel that they want to take their business to another level or if they want to troubleshoot to talk, talk about an issue they may have. And what are some of the uh, typical issues that people come up against, particularly in the early days? Uh, <laughs> they can have some issues with staff members. Mm -hmm. uh, that is one of them. So I talk to them about how they can manage their staff and also to make sure their staff are happy in working for the organization so looking at what benefits that the staff members are, are getting as well because it has to be um, a win-win situation for everybody mm -hmm. so I, I speak to them in terms of how to manage their staff um, another issue could be that they're looking at getting more business so I would look at how many contracts are out there at the moment for them to look at applying that I feel that they'll be able to to meet the needs of the contract yeah because let's face it with them um, with a small business the biggest challenge is often is that uh, 
you know, you have to work on generating business and then you have to deliver that business, but also still work on generating more business. So otherwise you end up in this kind of feast or famine situation. Exactly, exactly. And that's what um, I always say to them as directors, their duty is to look at developing your business every single day to spend one hour on developing that business, just making sure that you're following that, that uh, roadmap to get more um, income for your business. And, and how do you help people? Because sometimes there are people get very afraid, say, well, I don't have the financial now or skills to do this. How, how do you help people in that area you know, get comfortable with, with the financial aspect of things? Well, I look at uh, what is best for the client financially, what they can actually afford to do mm -hmm. at this present time. So I then would say to them, okay, start this particular type of business which um, a care agency is less than buying a property yeah. to start for senior living for example um, care home so I always say to try and start off with something that is easy manageable for them to be able to develop and then they can look at uh, getting that property and having a senior care home for example yeah. And then probably to understand that everything uh, always takes a little bit longer than you would like. So there's, you need to plan for that and, and patience and make sure that you have the, the capital to see you through a you know, significant period of time. Oh, definitely. And also we've got rules and regulations and legislation mm -hmm. sure. to adhere to. And uh, sometimes it may not be as quickly as you would like it to be. So, you know, red tape can hold things up yeah, no 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 absolutely i mean obviously highly regulated uh, highly regulated industry um and and then um the other part is um uh, when people get going sometimes the the temptation is just to kind of be happy with what you've got and and maybe just make incremental changes how can you how do you help assess people when they're ready to maybe make bigger leaps and expand or when it or whether it's right for them to stay and just consolidate what they have. So I um, speak to clients and I'm always, like I said, holding web classes, mm -hmm. which are free web classes and they're for about two hours long. And I always try and encourage them to try and jump onto a web class just to get them thinking and more motivated and looking at what other um, additional services they can provide so that's mm -hmm. what we look at as well yeah and obviously um providing additional services without losing focus on your core business because that's the other trap some people sometimes fall into they start especially when they're starting off something they try to sell everything rather than focus on on you know a core competency you're right you're right and uh, that's what we try and encourage them to do, not to jump to too many things, mm -hmm. deal with one thing first, get strong in that, then go on to the next stage and do another type of service. Yeah. So if, if, so if anybody was watching this and they're a healthcare professional, uh, how, would you, uh, how would you advise them if they wanted to do a quick kind of self-assessment on whether they're ready to, to take a leap like this? What, should they, what questions should they be asking themselves? I think they need to look at um, having an action plan and uh, to sit down, write out what it is that they want to achieve, what their time frame is, and make it realistic. You know, a three, six month plan, for example, to set your business up and what type of service they want to provide. And also looking at the age group of the service users as well. So what are they most passionate at? Trying to look at what legislation is currently in their um, town, for example. Mm -hmm. So they need to do some research about what it is that they want to provide and look at the legislations that are um, adhered to that. Yeah, so I mean, basically, you're saying is like to do a lot of research, and I think that's always a that's always a, a sage piece of advice is to do a lot of research and really understand, as you said, who your target market is going to be, uh, demographics, etc., and then understand the 
um, the landscape of the business in your particular area, in your particular country or, or whatever. Um, but the research part is key. Yes, definitely, definitely. And just, you know, a notepad and paper, just writing things down or computer, laptop, iPad. Mm. You know, we've got the internet now, so it's a lot quicker than what it was years ago where you have to go to the library, for example, mm -hmm. or yeah. bring various competitors. Everything's online. And, you know, you can, which saves a lot of time as well. So I would mm. also say about that as well, to do your research and do as much as you possibly can online, as well as finding out what competitors are, are doing. What and, doing. And just, yeah, and, and just to, in, in, in conclusion here, what is your advice to people, particularly in, in the healthcare industry as you see it now? Is it, is it going more that there's lots of opportunities for people to set up small businesses or is it consolidating to big businesses or how, how is it developing? Well, um, due to uh, the need is huge and uh, there's always going to be a need and the need is increasing at all times, even though we're going through this difficult uh, sure. pandemic moment, we still um, need care. Care never stops and um, it's looking at this aspect and moving forward while um, you can. A lot of people, a lot of clients are working from home now and some mm -hmm. people have lost their jobs. So mm -hmm. uh, for a lot of clients, they're actually coming forward. We've had two clients who lost their jobs. They came to me and they've now got contracts and they're right. doing really well. So, which was a frightening time for them. But now look at what they've achieved. Yeah, and I think it's a, it's in some ways, uh, even before the pandemic, the, the world was changing in some in many ways, and the idea of of contract workers and gig workers and and using outside resources was becoming more and more prevalent because it was easier to find people, as you said, through the internet and all of that kind of stuff. So in some ways. Um, this has probably accelerated it, uh, what was already happening and showing that indeed um, small one person businesses, small businesses, whatever, that they can, they can be, it can be quite lucrative because a lot of uh, facilities and that are looking to be able to outsource work. That's right. And that is happening all the time. We've hit it yeah. right <laughs> yeah. Plus, obviously, um, obviously, people are living longer now, so the whole uh, senior care industry is not going to shrink anytime soon. The baby boomers are here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what's driving it? Well, listen, Christine, this has been great, and uh, and congratulations, and exciting. You're there in Cyprus uh, at the moment, establishing another business, and and hopefully some more before the end of the year. So you're living proof of uh, of what you're talking about. All of Christine's information will be in the contributor bio. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Yes, okay. So um, I've got over 30 years experience in the field. So I've, I'm not just a consultant. I've actually done these types of businesses before. So um, you'll get in my experience as well as my expertise and um this is what I do. It's something I've always wanted to do is to coach and teach people how to set up a care business. So this is what I do. I do boot camps. I've got a boot camp this week, uh, which I, you know, really enjoy doing. I teach. Um, long days so I enjoy what I do so I do I have to train people to have healthcare business. All right that's fantastic. Well listen Christine it's been a pleasure speaking with you. Um I'll see you all for another yeah. expert interview really soon. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>